Valid. Valid. Yep. Are we live? Oh, word. Okay. Don't see us yet on the YouTubes. I don't see. Uh, I don't see the button yet. Ah, wait. Mm, I think so. Oh my gosh! Every time. Every time. Oh, we know <laughs> see. That's how we know we're live. Hey, we don't need to check levels or anything. Does Kiki have hiccups? Yeah, we got uh, yeah, hiccups. We okay, must, we're live. We're live. We must be live. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, so now it looks like we're live on YouTube at least. Groovy. We've just swapped to the painting, the the actual thing that people are here for. Let me turn night light off because <laughs> I'm not trying to paint with the yellow tent on my screen. Okay, cool. Why not? <laughs> yeah, what could possibly go wrong? Alright, would y'all, uh... Whoa. Oh, I forgot to, uh, promote us in Discord channel I'm in. Oh yeah, did we make an Instagram post? Did uh, Facebook, Instagram, and all those wonderful things, so yes. Okay, cool. Um... Let's see, let's play a live. game called which uh um which youtube account am i signed into oh that's a fun <laughs> game okay the good one all right not the bad oh <laughs> uh, yeah gina thanks for hi. thanks for letting us know we're live yeah. hi gina let us know how the audio levels are okay All right, I think I think we're good. I think we're ready. I'm gonna start oh. painting and turn my brain off. Awesome. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> lose lose the ability to speak because I'm gonna be trying to do an art. I gotcha. Oh, when all the good. all the brain cells that way. So cool. Mm -hmm. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, happy. Um, a whatever it is, wherever you are in the world um, of, of shelter in place, thanks for joining us. Um, and thanks YouTube for commending that we do more live stream content. Um, so if you found us through the hashtag with me, if you found us through hashtag rescue dogs, or if you uh, are one of our wonderful subscribers, <laughs> uh, thank you again, folks, um, or seeing us on Facebook Live, we're, we're happy to have you. Uh, I'm Alex, and I'm the creator, inventor, designer of a board game called Dog's Bond, where the players take on the role of a dog at a shelter uh, or rescue, and uh, they're going to collect the attributes that they need to be adopted into one of six forever homes. We are goodness, crossing fingers. We're like a month away from having um, all of our art done, design done. Okay, internal screams. <laughs> yes. yes. And uh, yeah, and uh, I'm joined by uh, Sarah, who's there in your screen in Hi. the bottom left-hand corner, um, our illustrator extraordinaire, <laughs> as well as uh, Kiki, our lead designer, um, who's uh, hey. on the phone line or audio line with me. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so just hanging out today. Thanks again for joining us. We um, sometimes we have the sometimes we've had. Um, their rescue organizations come in and you know kind of get to chat about their their dogs their their situation what they're doing to keep uh, pups healthy um so you know if you like that content uh, like learning about board games like art um like subscribe and do all the wonderful things in the in the doobly doos <laughs> um and don't forget us... to demolish that bell <laughs> smash <laughs> yes. that bell <laughs> the bell. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah. So, um, today we're just, yeah, it's, it's barely a hangout day. Um, so we have some dog stories to share with you. Um, I'll go first if, since, uh, since Sarah, you're getting into the groove of the, uh, the painting now that, mm -hmm. and, and thank you again for being our technical lead and technical <laughs> designer for all making this possible. Mm -hmm. Um, so the story that I have uh, since our last live stream is that Dogs Bond game, uh, well, we're, we're part of a team. We're part of a rescue community, as we all are. We rescued a dog. Oh, so, um, so exciting. There, 
So, uh, little pups. His name his name is Brownie. He's an eight month old golden retriever. Or excuse me, he's a golden retriever, yellow lab mix. We're not really sure. The puppy was uh, in kind of a bad situation, you know, being an outside dog, or a shot collar, and just oh, kind of just all manner of messiness. Um, we were con <laughs> it was great, uh, very surprising too. We were contacted as Dogs Von Game. We were contacted wow. and asked, "Do you know of anyone that might be able to help us rescue this uh, this Labrador?" And wow. uh, you know, if you've joined us uh, last live stream. Golden Gate Labrador Res Labrador Retriever Rescue. Debbie, shout out to Debbie, um, was uh, our guest last week or last time, I should say. And um, so we got directly in touch. We um, figured it all out over email, so everyone was appropriate six feet social distance away. Mm -hmm. And Brownie is in uh, now. Brownie is uh, is safe and in a foster kind of situation there. Um, and so we're keeping in contact. We're trying to get some pup dates. We're trying to get some photos. Um, but uh, yeah, it was it you know kind of got to a point where um, Brownie's you know owner was uh, convinced to do an owner surrender to the to the rescue agency. And um, I think yeah now the now the, now they're in a great situation. Um, so yeah yeah it was a uh, it was just kind of one of those things where. This project has taken us in so many cool directions. Uh, myself personally, right, working with um, artists and designers really much more closely than I ever imagined, working and supporting rescues uh, in a personal way, not just by myself uh, volunteering in kind of a one-to-one -one, like point in time, but really also to being a resource. Mm -hmm. um, it's been really cool, it's been really great. So that's my, that's my Dog story update since, uh, since we last talked. So yeah, thanks everyone for support the support, the participation. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, like, share, subscribe to you know all the content that we're trying to put out. Also too, in this game, during this game, it's gonna save lives, and I think that is oh. one of the most exciting things that I can say about this game and this project um, is that we're really gonna make a, a I think a tremendous impact. Um, and hopefully those stories get back to us. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I've been doing. Amazing. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I can't so, wait um, if we can see pictures or get updates. I can't wait to see mm -hmm. what the little puppy's life is like. Yeah, yeah, me too. It's gonna be it's good. Uh, Dax on the chat. Hello. Hi. Thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, and and anybody out there in the chat, if you. Uh, have any questions today we're we're taking audience questions and uh we'll just kind of roll with it um yeah, kiki I, I know you had you had your dog story as well right today <laughs> oh so, uh, if you wouldn't mind sharing with the group <laughs> <laughs> the the story of gizmo <laughs> yeah okay um hold on one second i'm actually making you know what you're talking about you know that you're talking about him and he's like wait well, you're gonna <laughs> yeah, embarrass no, me gotta, on the internet <laughs> yeah i gotta i gotta go covert on this one <laughs> now, on him. Um... okay leo does um, that he knows when i'm talking about him his ears perk up like what how do how do you know that he knows well because he he'll show up like if i if we continue this conversation right now he's sleeping in the other room um <laughs> Which is unusual. He's usually underfoot, but like if I continue talking about him, he's gonna come in and and either no. Really, what it is if, if I try to like put him on blast, he will make a liar out of me. Just like remember that time <laughs> when we were streaming and he decided to like destroy the blanket on blanket, the chair, yeah, and, yeah, on camera, and then as soon as I zoomed in on him, he laid down like I wasn't doing anything. Yeah. <laughs> he, knows, he knows. He knows when you're watching, yeah. and he he recognizes eyes whether they are electronic or human <laughs> yeah <laughs> wow that's kind of deep <laughs> <laughs> um sorry i'm actually making a little story announcement for our live stream oh, oh yeah go for it go for it yeah um, i just I've been... literally took a picture of what we're doing <laughs> nice yeah perfect um okay well then i i will i will uh one of the cool things that 
other things that we've been doing, you know, and again, I think it goes and speaks to the power of really just social media itself is that, um, you know, as we've been kind of growing and doing this, we're actually maybe 20, 15 people away from having 14, of having 400 followers on Instagram. Nice. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, you know, considering that, you know, all the algorithms and like that, you know, the that you kind of have to muddle through. So mm -hmm. the big uh, yeah. computer. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Hopefully, well, the plan the plan here in in May uh, is going to be, you know, we're going to craft up and craft up a lot of content um, that just kind of helps introduce folks to the game. So whether you've been with us uh, for a long time or you know, ever since we started posting out a lot of content starting like August of last year, or if you're brand new to the project, you know, I think that this is going to be a great time to learn and and, uh, and and follow us on all the social medias and you know, just really kind of have an opportunity to share this project. We're really zeroing in on what, what our core message is right around promoting responsible dog ownership awareness of rescue and of course raising funds for rescue right a portion of this project is going to go to the rescue not only when we do kickstarter in a one and blast but we want to actually commit to doing annual donations all of our use that partner with us and join our pack if you know of a rescue um or if you've already sent us you know info on which rescues to partner with thank you and you know share share our stuff and uh, keep you updated as far as you know kind of what is it that our project contributes directly um, in the form of donations or stories like Brownie's story mm. um, so yeah we'll do that yeah okay um, I think he's out of earshot so now I can talk crap about him <laughs> um, I don't know if anyone here uh, has ever attempted to do home construction while having a dog in your vicinity. Um, the problem is that uh, when you're running around doing stuff, your dog's like, hey, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. um, naturally. Um, that's not normally a problem <laughs> until dangerous power tools are involved and they want to be two inches away from you at all times. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it was it was definitely a challenge today. We're putting we're putting floors into our new house, um, and my dog Gizmo, the like hundred pound husky, was really wanting attention today. I guess um, so. We're like. I, I've never used a nail gun before. I realize this sounds like way scarier than it actually is. It's just he was in the way the whole time. <laughs> um, and I'm like, hey, buddy, love you to death. Can you perhaps relocate yourself to maybe <laughs> at least three feet away? Um, they don't understand that. They're just like, oh, you're talking to me? Cool, I'm going to lick you now. <laughs> um, and I'm over here, like, sweating bullets, like, trying to, like steady my hand to <laughs> to put the <laughs> nail into the into the baseboard mm -hmm. um yeah let me just try to eat this drywall is another is another <laughs> thought that is that is uh, akin to dogs um i think the it got to the worst point when he actually did comply with our demands and he decided okay i'll go lay down in the hallway um where my father-in-law was using a gigantic table saw um <laughs> and he's like clearly the best place for me to lay is directly underneath the saw <laughs> mm -hmm. really? so he's chopping off bits of the the um the little baseboard wood and it's just landing on him oh, just no. knocking him in the face like <laughs> we're like come on buddy you know like you gotta move so eventually we actually um coaxed him down the stairs gently um and then put laundry baskets <laughs> in front of the stairs so he, he couldn't come up. Because I was so scared the whole time. I was just like, if he gets hurt, I will be, like, so upset. Um, just because he won't move, you know? Mm -hmm. um, if you've ever tried to move a dog that large, you will know it's not very <laughs> easy. <laughs> so, yeah. Especially when they super don't want to move. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 
How's he been, like, handling the move in general? Does it seem like he's more anxious, or is it just that he's irritated that you're, you can't, like, hang out and pay attention to him? I think that it is column A and column B. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that he doesn't understand fully what's happening. Mm-hmm. Um, so he is um, extra clingy yeah uh and extra confused so like this is a three-story house so if we go to the bottom floor he'll immediately like he could be dead asleep and hear the creak of the first stair and be on your heels in Mm -hmm. a snap because i guess i don't i guess i don't know if he thinks we're gonna leave him or something (laughs) um i I don't know what it is but he's been like that since we moved he's kind of calmed down um Mm -hmm. but he's so old and going up all those stairs Mm -hmm. i don't know You'd think he would be tired, but he's as bry as a puppy. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. We got him three different dog beds. <laughs> we got, <laughs> got one for downstairs, uh, one for the middle, and one for upstairs. Mm-hmm. So, All the bribery. All yeah. the bribery. Yeah. <laughs> we figure funny. at least if he's going to follow us everywhere, he, um, he should be comfortable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got one. It's like they they sell these really cool big dog beds on Amazon, um, and it looks like a tiny couch. Heck yeah. I thought about getting Leo one of those, <clears throat> but I didn't know where I would put the extra furniture. <gasps> also, Wait, how big is how big is Leo? He's twenty eight pounds. If you had to measure him from tail to nose. <laughs> uh from tail to tip, uh <laughs> twenty four inches. Maybe okay. a little longer. He's a big boy. He's right over there. I could get him and measure him, but <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see how he would react to that. He would probably let me do it, but grumble about it the entire time. <laughs> that's our relationship. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> so anyway, moral of the story is um, baby gates. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Baby gates is how you would get construction done. Mm-hmm. Keep your dog safe. Um, be careful. They don't understand that certain things can hurt them. You know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I don't think he even understands that cars can hurt him. Aww. It's very strange. We we have to, like, remind him, hey, don't, don't walk into the street all the time. So, <laughs> I mean, that's kind of, in a way, it's good to know that he's, I mean, it's good that he's not afraid of them or hasn't been hurt by them, but it's bad no. that you have to <laughs> constantly advise him to avoid the street. Yeah. I mean, I guess if you think about it, if... I guess, like, cars aren't naturally occurring, it just seems like a big moving object. Mm-hmm. Why would they know that that would cause them harm? Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Same with, like, a nail gun. How, how does he know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Splashy would, oh. um, he... He didn't like it. Like, most dogs don't like it when you get really, like, agitated. If you get really active. Like, um, he was around when my siblings and I were kids. So whenever we would fight or play fight, he got so in our faces about it, barking at us, trying to get us to calm down. Mm. And around uh, when my brother was 12 or 13, he got really into paintball guns and would get really rowdy oh. with the paintball guns. And Splashy's response to guns, toy guns, paintball guns, whatever, was always to bite the muzzle of them. And we're like, no, that's <gasps> the worst no. possible reaction you could have to a gun, real or fake. Please stop. <laughs> um, but it was just like, you know, he's like, okay, when Ben gets a, one of those guns in his hand, he always gets really out of hand. I got to take it away from him. And <laughs> he had no concept of why that was dangerous <laughs> that makes sense yeah <laughs> yeah trying to explain to dogs <laughs> it's yeah. always like it's like oh here's a loud noise here's some change in scenery and it's like that's probably why the dog wants to be as close to you as you know as possible right it's mm-hmm. like uh new surrounding like i'm sure we're gonna go home at some point right like yeah. you know, you're still figuring out you know yeah that stuff. so yeah yeah we'll, we'll get there yeah. for sure yeah, I mean, it makes sense. He lived in our old house for, man, it must have been, like, seven or eight years. Wow. I wonder There's, like, if he's... 60 dog years, right? Like. Yeah, <laughs> I wonder if he still thinks we're going to go back. <laughs> yeah. Leo, um, he still remembers my uh, the house that he grew up in, my mom's house. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are things that he does. I'm, I'm sure I've told you about the uh, 
the shower head thing, right? That Leo does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I think, I think we talked. I think we talked about it on the first room. But yeah, please did go we? ahead. Okay. <laughs> well, um, he has uh, when when he was a baby. Um, well, he wasn't a baby. He was probably close to a year old. But he um he used to drink water out of the bathtub. He still does sometimes. But this one time, he hopped in the tub and asked me to turn the water on for him. Um, and I didn't check if the shower head was on. So every other time he hopped in the tub, I'd reach over, turn it on, the water would come out of the faucet, I'd stop it, he'd lean over to drink. But this time, I turned the water on, the shower head was on, so he was just sitting there calmly, perfectly waiting for his water and got psh, blasted with it. Um, and had he like scurried out of the tub and ran away and I felt so bad, I apologized to him constantly. But to this day, that was, like I said, it was, he was about a year old. Um, He's going to be nine this year, to this day, in my mom's bathtub, where this happened. Not the one at the house we live in now, but my mom's one only. Whenever I put my hand on the knob to turn the water on, he takes a step back and looks at the shower head like, mm? is it going to do it? <laughs> and like, that only happened one time. That has never happened again. But he remembers it so clearly that he has that reaction in that room and nowhere else. Hmm. And like a steel trap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I felt so bad. I still do. But it was kind of funny. Awesome. Hey, hey, Jamie, thanks for joining us on the, on the live stream. That's a great question. So we got a question, um, which, you know, hopefully uh, you and I can, well, we'll, we'll probably tag team this one. Um, the question is, are the illustrations of the people based off of real people? Mm. Um, that is a good question. Um not y yes and no um i so i explained on the stream before that my um kind of my method for doing these illustrations is to i without doing much reference or research i will just like take the prompt that we have if it's an event card or if it's a character in this case alex you had really like great character de descriptions um so i took that and i just kind of imagined what this person would be like and i drew a rough character sketch of how they felt um how they felt to me anyway um, and then I went uh, just looking for people that had those vibes on the internet. Um, just, you know, random pictures of people um, with different, uh, like, facial features or expressions or vibes, I guess. I really needed a second word for vibe, but you know what I mean. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so, like, there are reference images of people, like, you know, models that post in stock images or pictures of, like, people at festivals and stuff that they're loosely based on, but it, there is no one person I can point to or one reference image that I can point to that I can say, yes, that's the person I based this on. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, when we started uh, long, long ago around these, like the idea of the potential adopters, um, I had you know, essentially started off with more of the, the person's, the person's personality um, so, and, and also to kind of what their interests were beyond dog ownership, right? And so kind of, you know, giving that rounded, uh, that rounded story of who these adopters could be, um, you know, this one is, uh, this one, wait, who, what, what? I've forgotten the name already. April? Uh, but this in, one? April, thank you. Yes. yes. Thank you. We just updated um, their names. Yes. So we're updating names. Um, so April, uh, was like the personality and the interests loosely based off of people that I that I knew and then you know just kind of going off of that um, we, we just kind of began Sarah and I met in North Carolina to actually talk about the potential adopters and, and the game itself uh, we also too said you know we really want a wide pantheon of adopters being presented here in this game um, so we, we, we kind of came up with a list you know, we said, okay, we want to have people of uh, every background, every nationality, uh, orientation, and just kind of, you know, let's put it all put it all on the table, right? Um, and you know, we we have a rare, a very beautifully diverse uh, set of adopters. I'm actually very, very pleased and very proud of it um, that we and we didn't oh didn't say we had it wasn't like a checklist we had to do. It was more around the outcome that we were focused on, right? We wanted to be a verse cast. We wanted to be a representative um, project where people can say not only, you know, those likes and dislikes that this adopter have are like me, 
but maybe it's you know hey this person or this character uh, illustration uh, I know this person you know or I know somebody who's just like this person and maybe has like you know that mix of uh, of personality traits interests and um, so we, we tried to do I knew that that was my my vision and Sarah of course was like oh yeah I got gotcha. you like in 10 <laughs> seconds was like I know what you I know what you're getting at um, yeah. and so yeah so we put that together and uh, yeah couldn't be more pleased mm -hmm. yeah it kind of like it I, I drew these folks like there was a conversation that we'd had um, you can see the original art here um, for April um, there's it was a conversation that we had when we first did these about like you know is her forehead too tall? Is her hair too thin? Or is like, like I, I gave these people physical flaws because I knew that that was what like Alex wanted. I, I knew that you would appreciate that these are, you know, just like the shelter dogs are a little rough around the edges. They're normal dogs, you know, um, that I wanted the people to feel that way too. Um, just like people that, you know, you know, people that you meet on the street. That's why I, uh, one of my favorite resources, I don't know if we could link it, or at any point if we could share it, um, but there is a collection of photos that folks uh, of folks at county fairs all around the country, just candid photos of different people, um, and there are such great characters and character designs there, and they're so human and real and average, and like that was a big resource to me when I was designing these, because um, like even awesome. even the like this is something that came up also when I was writing those those bios um, for the Meet the Team page and talking about how like. Mm -hmm. Whenever I paint these dogs, I try to think about, like, each one as if it, that were my favorite breed, you know? I want, mm -hmm. if you love Golden Retrievers or Boston Terriers or Collies or whatever, you know, I want you to see in the art what you love and know about that dog breed. And I kind of want that for the people, too, you know? Like, what, I want you to see the humanity and see things to love about the characters as I'm painting them. If that makes sense at all. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, Kiki, uh, just, you know, answer a question about, you know, character design itself. Um, you know, like, what is, what would you say as far as, you know, coming up with, um, you know, character designs, especially when you're given, basically, right, like somebody like me who's a designer who, like, I have this idea, but I don't, um, I want this person to be artistic. I want this person to be a photographer. I want, you know, mm -hmm. sort of thing. Like, how do you how do you take of a you know one two three bullets of you know detail and then flesh that into a character? Hmm. Uh, this question was addressed to both of us. Kiki, do you want to go first? Uh, you can go first. You're the one painting the character <laughs> right now. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I think it's just. Um, that's really hard to describe. Like, I wouldn't call myself a character designer first. That's like a, a, a whole religion within being an artist is to be a character mm -hmm. designer. Um, and so like being an illustrator, like making stuff like this, like I will have to do the environment design, the character design, the costume design, you know, like I have to do all of that stuff, but it's not, I, I don't consider myself an authority on doing this and I'm also not very practiced in putting to words how you do that um, to me it was just like that, that's why I keep bringing up that library of people at you know the county fair I would look at those folks these strangers have nothing but their body language the expression on their face the stuff that they were wearing the props that they were holding you know um, I mean it's not called props when it's real people items but you know what I mean <laughs> um, and uh, what how did they feel what did what do, what do i imagine they might be into um what is their like their energy i guess um and and then note like okay why does this person feel more standoffish why does this person feel more creative and then just look objectively and see like what is their posture what is what are they wearing you know how are, what are their facial features like are they sharper are they soft you know stuff like that um and try and like do kind of the same thing you do in an environment or a prop or a dog or a composition you know you just have to kind of use tap into your empathy look at you know the real world and people that you know and people that you know again that i was referencing tap into that empathy see 
do they look like a creative person okay yeah what about them looks creative and what about that can i apply to this creative character that i have to design um mm -hmm. yeah it's like there's a lot of just gut feeling about it um and a lot of being prepared to fail like um a lot of n trying to confront or leapfrog your own personal biases about what makes someone look friendly versus unfriendly you know yeah um, that's a big one <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah a lot of just uh you know empathy thinking trying failing pitching being prepared to be wrong um yeah <laughs> just trying your best <laughs> yeah i mean wow yeah i think if i if i had to think about it it's it's really hard to design characters that are resembling real like just just real people instead of like some fantasy character like it, it's it's way easier to design like a mage you know mm -hmm. like this person's a mm -hmm. wizard and they have fantasy yeah. exactly because you, you can like put potions on their yeah. belt put a pointy hat on it like everyone knows immediately it's a wizard mm -hmm. you know um the costume but with, can be a lot more outlandish and yeah. exactly but with with our people here it's like a lot of the times like out out in the wild if you see a person there's very little <laughs> to be gleaned mm -hmm. from that unless you have a conversation with them mm -hmm. like if i saw april without the camera would i know that she likes photography probably not you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. um right. but that's that's just how that's just how people are mm -hmm. um i think when it comes to like like disney character design and stuff they're they're very heavily reliant on shapes mm -hmm. it seems like yeah. Um, like if you, I, I don't know why this popped into my head. You look at Jafar from mm -hmm. Aladdin versus, uh, you know, the Sultan. The Sultan is the short, round, super happy, friendly guy, mm -hmm. and because he has primarily round shapes, like everything on him is round, he looks friendlier, like mm -hmm. softer. Jafar mm -hmm. is extremely angled and lanky. You know, like mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. same thing with the. Uh, What's what's her name? Nizma? Nizma, from... yeah. Yeah. Bruce and Groove. <laughs> and Bruce and oh, yeah, from Hercules. She's oh yeah, Bruce and Groove. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's it's pretty great. Yeah. Um and I I think that as we have kind of like evolved as 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 people and like Sarah has said, gained more empathy, I think that that's been lesser. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, because people are realizing there's more to there's more to someone than are they like angular and lanky you know does mm -hmm. that necessarily make them look you know like a villain it doesn't you know mm -hmm. like <laughs> yeah um so i don't know i think there's like there's psychological components in it and then there's there's the really looking at what makes this person a person mm -hmm. you know uh, yeah uh, like like person versus drawing mm -hmm. i guess if that makes sense so that's we... definitely something that we've done or this project i've seen you know kind of just wow me every every time right mm -hmm. it's the mm -hmm. it's the you know like you no know, uh, actually for me personally when you drew you know april uh in her character card i look at it and i go wait i know that person mm -hmm. i actually do know like i know i know wait did she model for this hang on a second. <laughs> wait you know somebody um, that looks and like i her. know <laughs> I, I do indeed actually Whoa. Um, it's it's particularly it's particularly the smile um you know for me mm. I, I've, I've spent time I, you know printing these out and like doing other tests but yeah it was like oh I mm, exactly who this is um, <laughs> yeah wow. that's pretty fun that's great um, yeah and know. that's okay. um sorry yeah, good <laughs> um so me me not being a character designer I can still pass on uh, things that I've heard from incredible character designers like Claire Keen. She's a legend. Uh, people don't know her name, but if you watched uh, Tangled, um, she mm -hmm. designed Rapunzel and did all of the paintings on the inside of Rapunzel's tower or her work. Um, she's uh, she's done a lot of children's books now, but she's, uh, again, a legend. Um, and also just a very sweet person. But she, uh, she did t Rapunzel's design by just... Um, she describes it as just living with the character. Um, she mm -hmm. talks about like just going about her day to day life and thinking about what Rapunzel would be doing and how she'd be doing it. Like just getting dressed in the morning, she's like, "I bet it would take forever to pull all that hair through a nightgown or something," mm -hmm. you know. 
um what would like a, taking care of her hair would be a big part of her day what would she do with being stuck at home you know how would she go about baking how would she go about the stuff just like trying again to tap into that empathy and live with this person um mm. and that's not obviously not to <laughs> compare my work or method to claire keen but when i was designing the you know costume quote unquote again they're just normal clothes but every every time you put something on you're making a choice about how you express yourself to the world and mm -hmm. so thinking about we have a character i forget what his new name is um what's his old name his old name is jerry Oh, Tom. Isn't Tom. that hilarious? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tom. Jerry is now Tom. Yeah. Um, Jerry is now Tom. <laughs> yeah. He's, uh, he was described as um, being into video games and wanting a dog with an open heart. Um, being being like a sensitive person. Which So I put him in a big, comfortable hoodie that is open. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he has just kind of like a, a kind of a tucked inside himself, but also like making eye contact and open to you like you know close mouth smile just like um you know i tried to think like okay if i'm this person if i'm the kind of person that is you know i'm uh kind of sensitive and quiet but still open what am i what am i wearing to go you know meet someone or go adopt a dog or whatever how am i mm -hmm. standing what's my behavior like how do i do my hair you know and all of those little things thinking about this drawing as a human being what are their choices like you know um and that kind of determined every decision that i made from their hair from their expressions from their clothes yeah yeah that's that's a that's a good one because um i feel like where when you when you look at somebody that's usually the first thing that says something about them mm -hmm. um is uh their hair or their clothes like if they if their hair is pink you're like hmm i know what kind of person you are maybe yeah. you know what i mean like, <laughs> yeah. not afraid to who's... be yourself yeah, you're, <laughs> not you're afraid brave to make a statement to... yeah brave yeah. enough to have strangers come up to you and ask you about your hair choices which like i'm i am not that kind of person i would love to have pink hair but I don't, because, you know, I'd, <laughs> I'd get a lot of yeah. uh, conversations about it. I want pink hair, too. Should we go dye our hair pink together? Let's go. It's quarantine. Isn't that a little bit on the nose? <laughs> everyone's, everyone's destroying their hair. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. The videos. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't even know what that means, but um, dangerous, dangerous. <laughs> my, uh, my solution, my solution has just been, you know, my Ninja Turtle, my Ninja Turtle mask. Uh, it. <laughs> encourages people to stay six feet away from me at all times. So <laughs> um, <laughs> we've got another we got another question in the chat. Um, do the dogs have a have a person in mind or is it random? That's a great question. Uh, I, I guess let me take it first from a game design perspective mm -hmm. and then um, you know we can talk about it from from also to the art perspective from what you've included, what you've uh, you know thought through um, both Kiki and uh, Sarah. So from a game design perspective, had initially started this a long, long, long time ago as a dating simulator. I thought, what it, wouldn't it be fun and hilarious to um, try to gamify the gamified dating, online dating uh, situation, right? Um, and so, you know, with that in mind, were, you know, different people uh, that were looking for a match and different, uh, different recipients of the, uh, of the affection um, that would be kind of the recipient, you know, the recipient side. I really quickly f found that that was way less interesting <laughs> than bringing forwards my experience in, uh, you know, in and kind of the conversation around dog rescue, right, and animal rights and of that nature. Mm -hmm. So, um, in that regard, I didn't want to try. I didn't want to make one adopter, um, you know, whether it be Tom or April. You know, to be the best adopter for a particular dog, and we've done a lot of work actually around making sure the design does not predispose a particular breed or a particular adopter to one and the other. Mm -hmm. So um, the way the game is played, it will lay you'll lay down six different adopter boards. These boards uh, indicate, you know, uh, are, are used to track and indicate how well your dog matches, player dog, matches the desires and kind of what the adopter is looking for. 
and the dog's instinct is, allows you to go for which adopter first. So if Sarah, my, if Sarah, myself, and Kiki are playing, okay, and all three of us are trying to go and be adopted by Tom, <laughs> um, you know, the uh, what happened there is um, the number of instinct cards played. Let's say Kiki has an instinct value. I have nine, and Sarah has eight. Then Kiki gets to go first. Can go for, and can try to be adopted by Tom first. And uh, if that match is made, and Tom adopts Kiki, then you know, Alex and Sarah have to go to kind of the next series of of adopters. Which, you know, might mean you know, which allow still is allowed. There is in the story elements of the game, all dogs can find their happy end. Uh, you know, they're happily ever after. And, um, but, you know, but at the end of the day, there is also too a slightly competitive nature of the game, which is to be the top dog, and that's through points. Um, so yeah, great. It's a great question. Um, I hope that, I hope that sh that helps, right? Mm -hmm. Dogs don't have a particular adopter in mind. Um, it is really random, but also too, it is very much your choice um, in the game. Mm -hmm. And that's how I designed it. <laughs> um, Kiki and Sarah, you guys played it, so the for those who haven't yet gotten to play it or weren't haven't seen uh, videos of us playing it, because mm -hmm. we need to make them. <laughs> Any <laughs> thoughts on that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I in my head, um, the, the Alex is right. There's no like gameplay advantages or disadvantages to matching certain people with certain dogs. In my head, though, I do have ideas about matches like I just associate dogs and certain adopters um, again not reflected whatsoever in the gameplay or in the art really um, but it just for whatever reason the first time I ever played when Alex came down to uh, North Carolina um, I played as a Boston Terrier and I matched with Ashley I, what is her name now her, her name Agnes. Agnes. Agnes yes mm -hmm. the old lady we have um, I matched with the old lady and so now I always associate the Boston with Agnes um, mm. I associate um, the uh, character or the, the adopter that is now named Mike with the Border Collie because that was the uh, one of the mm -hmm. art tests that I did was doing those two characters first. Um, yeah, I just, <laughs> just you know, for my own dumb little reasons, the adopters make me think of the dogs. Um, yeah, so in kind of the, you know, as I've explained so far, I've been thinking about these characters as people and I mean dogs as well so in that story that I've been you know living in to try and make the characters feel alive I do have associations <laughs> between them <laughs> yeah I definitely associate um, Winnie now with the Pomeranian as well mm -hmm. <laughs> just because that's what happens so mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah um, actually I feel like I have a spin-off question of that question. Is that okay? Is that allowed? Yeah, please. <laughs> okay. Of course. Because I was reading the question as, do the dogs have a, a, a specific dog that they were referenced after? Or is it oh. random? Oh. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no. The uh, the dogs all have... They are, they're not... The, the dogs are kind of the same way. They are an amalgamation of reference images that I found um, mm. in dogs that had the kind of feeling that I wanted to um, represent. They've changed a little bit over time. They're also, in some ways, just kind of the platonic ideal of that breed because I've known a lot of these dog breeds. Um, some of them have mm. markings that are modeled after dogs that I have known. Um, some of them have, um, <laughs> some of them, uh, unlike the adopters, some of the dogs do actually have reference images of like photos that I found of dogs that I loved their energy and their expression and their like fur patterns and stuff so they like made it in a lot but none of them are like one to one um yeah the basset hound has the markings of a basset hound that i knew named andy um obviously the boston terrier i have a boston terrier leo so <laughs> our boston <laughs> has leo's markings um and every painting i've done of the boston i'm lucky enough to i get leo to pose for me <laughs> for whatever angle <laughs> i need a boston face at i just make him do it and get pictures um did you did you get a picture of him chasing a piece of paper? No, I didn't get a picture of him chasing uh, paper. I um, you know what I did though? I got a, uh, I got a slow motion video of him trying to catch food. Oh, um, did you use that? Yeah, 
That's great. Yeah. Um, it's, again, it's not one-to-one -one because I couldn't get it exactly the right angle because this was a very chaotic, like, I had my phone in one hand and I was trying to, like, <laughs> keep it in frame, and I was holding, no, it wasn't food, it was a toy that I was throwing at him, his favorite toy, mm. um, and so he would jump up and try and catch it, and that, like, uh, open mouth about to bite the thing, um, giant bug eyes <laughs> is native yeah. in but it wasn't at exactly the right angle, so I had to, you know, I pulled some references for that as well. I think that, that painting that you're talking about, Kiki, is the one that resembles Leo least, because uh, it was impossible to get <laughs> get his face at the right angle. For reference, this is this is another event card that we're talking about, and it's a, it's a picture of a Boston that's like, mm -hmm. uh, attention has been caught by a piece of paper <laughs> drifting in the wind <laughs> well see i'm glad that it still reads without knowing the context of what that is that is a lure course that the boston is chasing oh. um uh. yeah they're very popular with um sight hounds you know like greyhounds or other animals like that um but boston's being ratters and leo in specific um i don't know a lot of boston's that do lure coursing but i know that it's i mean it's at least a thing every kind of dog can do it um, Leo mm, loves right, yeah. running and loves chasing, um, and I've actually looked into, I haven't pulled the trigger on this yet, but I have looked into doing, like, a DIY at-home lure course for him, because I think nice. he would love it. Nice. So, what is, what is it made out of? I'm sorry for taking the spin-off question for a really long time. <laughs> no worries. Um, it's, I think, sometimes they just use fabric, sometimes I've seen people do it DIY with, like, bags like plastic bags or whatever because the point is not for them to play with it the point is just for them to chase it mm -hmm. um i see sometimes yeah. they do it with toys and stuff sometimes they do let them you know finally catch it and chew on it so they'll tie toys to it but it's just like you put um spindles with wheels on it and twine and a motor mm -hmm. and just tie whatever you want to it um to that to the mm -hmm. string and set the motor going and then it runs the the course so, mm -hmm. yeah i really like, like that painting really Thank you. That I really, really want to, to adopt is called a Basenji. Ooh. Again, primal dog. <gasps> Medium Ooh. size. So think like think like cute corgi face. Mm -hmm. Eek like a Doberman with a curly Ooh. Q tail um, on the very on the very end, like a Shiba Inu. They're very like cat like, they're very aloof. Yeah, they don't, you like don't deal with you. And um and, and it's it's just a great little prim primal dog. Mm -hmm. They don't bark. Ooh. They yo they baroo, they yodel. <laughs> and um I and love uh, these they breeds. also yeah, and they also like uh, but um to the point, they don't fetch, they are just like not interested, but they chase things. Mm. If they're at a dog park, like as soon as a dog is running, they're chasing or being chased. Mm -hmm. And it's and they are so small and light and spry that they you can get into you know, you'd think like, oh you know, big dog's gonna eat them. Like, well, no, the Basenji can get out like of most rabbit. of its own method. Yeah. Yeah, basically. It's pretty great. great. They're so, literally uh, so cute. I just looked one up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Basenji, yeah. I love um, their yeah. their posture. They have such a proud posture, like uh -huh. very upright in the front. Yes. A lot of those yes. old breeds do. Basenjis are pretty old, aren't they? In terms of... Yeah, yeah. They are yeah. They used to be, you know, they're just... Uh, hunt lions actually so they are fearless Bird? little little creature creatures yeah mm -hmm. um they they have some health challenges here in the u.s like the breed was actually in danger of going going out wow. they actually had to bring over like 30 or 50 dogs from africa to mm -hmm. you know diversify and now it's a very healthy you know healthy breed pretty rare um i would say but uh but yeah very healthy wow. um let me go to the next question that I see uh, coming in from the chat. Um, and uh, so it's a good gamer question. Mm. The game, is the game like a turn-based tabletop game, a deck building type, or what exactly? Mm. Um, yeah, I've tried, to, I've tried to kind of relate what that is. Um, it's uh, more of a character build. Each of the players be take on the role of a dog at a rescue. So, you know, Kiki would would be uh what did you pick when you played play the palm, the palm? no you played jack russell you played the jack i played russell. jack russell yeah okay, you played jack russell right and then sarah you know you probably picked the boston and for mm -hmm. me maybe i picked the border collie so, uh you know we take on these roles and so what you're what you're doing is you're drawing an event card to see what's happening in in shelter in the rescue in the day in the life right um so you know it could be 
uh, anything from like the card that we revealed last time, birthday, right? You draw two, you play one. So you're gonna draw two attribute cards and play one attribute card down on the dog. The dog now has, you know, an obedience value worth maybe one to three. And uh, you know, you build up these stats for your for your pup, for your dog. And as you're growing these attributes, right, you're making more and more matches for what the potential adopters like April, uh, like Tom, like Mike are looking for. That's how you that's how you're, you know, moving up in likely likeliness they will adopt you. Um, the scoring, uh, to explain it a little bit, you get get points every match that you have made with the adopters. Let's say Tom, April, and Mike all love you right, because that's how dogs are and that's how dog people are, <laughs> right? You've made three matches um, across all of these adopters. You get three points each of those adopters. Right? So now you're at nine points. Then let's say you get adopted by April and you actually get to go home um, with April. April will give you bonus points um, for meeting her criterion as well. So, you know, you could end up with 15 points um, across the board because you've matched with, you know, your, your choices that you make for your dog, um, whether you're playing the different attributes of obedience, grooming, health, or temperament allow you to score those matches and give you those points um then as far as you know other cards in there there are things that uh are cards that may force you to discard attributes that you've already placed on your character build um are events that will you know cause you to have to lose thing lose some attributes like uh you know if you get skunked mm -hmm. you might have to lose your top grooming card um you have play attributes there and that kind of moves it. So it's a you know kind of a character build um, plus one plus two type of mechanic. Um, it's very akin to other popular games like Munchkin, um, you know, or uh, I think some of the are known like well, massive multiplayer online role playing games. You know, just kind of building that character and uh, seeking seeking out that match. Find dog, uh, you know, your dog and uh, the right adopter to that happily ever after for sure. Oh. Yeah, um, I probably need to find out in like, like Board Game Geek, like wh what exact category it's called. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, cause it's not, it's not deck building and it's not a role playing game, um, but it is a, like a character, character build, um, draw one, draw two. Uh, for those also, you know, other interesting points or, or just to kind of help, it's a family friendly, ages 10 and up a uh, casual game right uh, I designed it with uh, several friends in mind uh, as I was playing this game uh, around how do I connect with these folks without a you know without a screen without you know, words with friends online like that was one of the things that kind of irked me was we all got together then joined a private words with friends game and scrabble the board game was literally <laughs> on the table and i was like wait what are we doing here like let's connect as humans right and i think now especially now um folks are looking for ways to connect and really you know when this game is ready to go will the rest of the world and uh you know we can all gather around the table and uh play some cards and uh you know reconnect with each other uh or yeah that's uh that's kind of how i would i would describe it um anything else that i should add there team no no i think that's a great uh description um i think uh it's knowing so knowing theo uh we uh I, the game is as competitive as the players um <laughs> kiki and i played a game <laughs> where she was so intent on getting adopted by the one specific adopter that she picked that she would do anything to that end. <laughs> so, like, I've, I've played plenty of games where it's, you know, I don't mind losing and it's no big deal and nobody's stabbing each other in the back or whatever, but I've also played games where it's uh, ruthless and we absolutely stab <laughs> each other in the back. 
Um, but it's it is not it's not like uh, Monopoly, which is like openly hostile to its players. <laughs> It's a fun, easy game, and you have to bring your <laughs> own competitiveness. Yeah, it's like BYOC. <laughs> bring your own competitiveness. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's, she's right. It's not everyone that steps into a, a game about dogs and adoption and happy endings and that kind of stuff with the intent to destroy. Um, <laughs> You're just special in that way. Yeah, I just... <laughs> like i will be adopted into the fancy house mm -hmm. <laughs> i will win <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so uh yeah hopefully that, that answers that question oh another okay here we go with another question um does each dog have a base card that you choose at the beginning yes absolutely we have um we have six dogs for you to choose from um we are hoping through kickstarter we can release Dog number seven and dog number eight, and you know, make that round that out amongst the top eight uh, breeds, or that you know, based on popularity, according to the um, American Kennel Club. Um, so yeah, we have you know the collie, we have the retriever, we have the Labrador, um, and these these dogs have their own kind of base throw cards. They have no attributes to start with. Um, all pretty clean slate. Each of the dogs do have a special ability, a special power that plays in the game. And I've tried to model these special abilities based on do dozens, if not at maybe a hundred hours of research into the breed, and then also to reviewing kind of what it is that you could do in the game. Um, so as an example, uh, the Jack Russell Terrier, which, which Kiki has played, um, one of their special or their special ability is uh, rather than drawing the attribute card from the top of the deck, which is a blind draw, may on their turn and when instructed draw from the top of the discard pile. They go through the they go through the garbage, and um, <laughs> that's a shout that's a shout out to uh, to Amy's dog Smudge, um, <laughs> who. You know, came and spent some, spent a little time with me, and uh, well, just rooted on the bottom of that garbage can, and whatever he wanted in there, there might he be stuff in there. Definitely got it. Yeah, there might mm. be stuff in there. He's got. He's um, not going to so know yeah. unless he checks. <laughs> Precisely. So um, you know, so Jack Russell, you know, being also too as a breed, right? They are they are curious and uh, designed to kind of root out things from under other things <laughs> that's why i gave them that that special ability jack um, russell's are ratters too aren't they sorry jack russell's are uh, bred as ratters originally yes correct yeah all most terrier breeds are yeah. um you know kind of rat ratter type uh type of dogs so mm -hmm. yes um there might be you know in the in the additional expansions and starter available other breeds that we can kind of share uh, and 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 work on that will have other special abilities like that um, I'll give you another example uh, the German Shepherd right as a, as a dog as a breed often actually one of the most social dogs that you can have so uh, when we have other bent cards occur in the game where you know our, like breakfast time, lunch time, dinner time. Your is your best pal at the rescue going to eat with you today? Is there going to be a volunteer that's going to come hang out with you today? And those and that is you know very focused on socialization. And when that happens, then the uh, then the German Shepherd is allowed to you know discard cards to play a card on themselves, right? So when they're engaged with something going on in the game. Um, they're they're really benefiting because that's when they're most likely to learn tried to factor in what is it that the breed likes to do when is it that the breed likes to interact and um and and play that into the game anything else guys that that i missed no. or, or we could talk about even the bassett's special ability oh, which yeah uh, that's that's fun which we referenced I yeah think there's <laughs> i mean they all have special abilities and they're all different but they're kind of two different 
categories. Alex, I don't know if this is how you think of them, but like some dog special abilities are activated by event cards. Like you'll draw a card and it has a special symbol on it and that's that dog's time to shine. But then other dogs have abilities that you can use at any point. Um, and the Bassets, I think, is my favorite one of those just because it's so <laughs> subversive. I don't, I'm not good at playing it because it, I'm not the kind of person in games that will like bide their time and think three moves ahead or whatever. I'm just like, go, 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 attack, do the, do it now. So I'm really bad at the Bassett's ability, but I like it a lot conceptually. <laughs> um, so the Bassett Hound, um, and I designed the Bassett Hound kind of around, around me, <laughs> um, <laughs> where I was thinking about, you know, what is, the, what is this game? This game is going to be fast action, you know, or as fast as the, as the players yeah. can, can, can act. Uh, you know, engaging, and um, you know, some of it is going to be, you know, draw one, play one. Okay, I've played my card, or draw one, play one. Okay, I'm going to use this to remove card from you from my opponent. Oh no, like blocked, sort of a thing. So there's 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 competition and collaboration. There's um, and then like Kiki was saying, right, bring your own competitiveness. Um, <laughs> the Basset Hounds, Basset Hounds ability is. Uh, they get to at the very end of the game, a one play one, and then they roll the die, and based on whatever number is is it, it comes up, they get to play that many cards on themselves. They could be hanging on to all of those very very rich cards throughout the whole game, letting all of the you know letting all that puppy energy hang out and just do its thing during the game, uh, and then you know at the very end, whoop in play five cards on themselves and you know, change the dynamics entirely um yeah uh that that card really kind of came from my idea that you know, when i play with younger players uh in play tests 10 years old 11 15 um they're very active they're very energetic so think having the time think about those things like you know like sarah was saying three moves ahead 10 moves ahead um really lets me you know kind of do what i need to do or with but he was not playing the game but still be engaged in doing something with you know my my nieces and nephews so the basset hound for me is you know one of my favorite breeds to play because he is uh all at once end of game i'm gonna <laughs> you know i'm gonna change this whole board state uh, watch out <laughs> about to wreck this guy's whole career <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You think you're. You think Tom. You, you know, guess what? Tom's gonna adopt me now. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Um. Okay. <laughs> Tuesday, <laughs> April. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I uh, didn't want to interrupt, but Leo. Uh, he had his dinner as we were. Like I fed it to him with plenty of time to eat before the stream, but he just wouldn't do it. Um. So. While I was sitting here, he decided that he had to eat his dinner, and he always, always, uh -huh. after he eats dinner, has to go outside right away. Hmm. For it. <laughs> Gizmo yeah. does the same thing. Why is that? <laughs> these, are, these are essential activities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I have some um, of them. They do that because they, you know, digestion gets going. And well, yeah, but that fast, dang. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, <laughs> I don't know necessarily that fast, but. Um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe it's just a... Maybe there's, like, a dog behavior reason why. I'll have a meeting. They all talk about it, and they're like, hey, are we still doing that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're still doing that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah, it's in their best interest to get us to think that there are just some things that all dogs need to do so that whenever, mm -hmm. like, if, if they have that as the baseline, then they can con us into any other thing. <laughs> I suppose that's true. <laughs> so, um, well, Kiki, you've, you've played the game, and also, too, we'll let Sarah uh, and Leo do their thing. So, uh, handle the business. So, oh, I'm back already. <laughs> Kiki, oh, you're back already. Okay, yeah. <laughs> cool. um, so, yeah. So, um, you know, I think, you know, my question to both of you now, as you've worked on the game and kind of explored it uh, a little bit more, do you think that Knowing the game backwards, forwards, you know, center uh, gives you a tremendous advantage against a brand new player 
or do you think that this game is you know it has enough randomness and is also too balanced enough that like a new player can come and bump on you uh, well I wouldn't say a tremendous advantage because there is a lot of randomness to it but there have been times where mm -hmm. I have been showing someone how to play the game and me deciding whether or not to explain a certain mechanic more thoroughly to that person Oof. would mean that I would win or lose. <laughs> and, and I don't mean like, I always, you know, explain at the top of the game, I explain everything the first time it comes up, you know, I like give a little spiel at the beginning and as mechanics come in, like there's not a ton of mechanics that really wait until deep in the game. It's just that like, mm. as you continue to interact with them, you understand more and more of like the ramifications of what this mechanic mm -hmm. means um mm. so like i always explain it i'm never like you know th trying to metagame or outplay people just based on the fact that i'm doing a bad job at explaining it but sometimes it is like sometimes i play with people i know and i know what they would do based on their understanding of that rule and so mm -hmm. i'm like okay do i tell this person that they have the ability to crush me using this mechanic right now, or do I just kind of let it ride and wait for them to realize it, you know? Um, and, and also, like, there are things that, uh, that I do, just, like, knowing games and knowing my play style. Um, like, like, for example, the reason that when we played that game, Kiki decided that she wanted that specific adopter is because he had the highest house number, which means that he's uh -huh. worth the most points out of any of those adopters. And to uh -huh. me, that doesn't really factor into my ranking of who I want to get adopted by, but it really mattered to her. So, like, there... Okay. Hmm? Can I just take a second to, to point out the fact that because I did that, I won? Just, just Yes, saying. because it was an <laughs> extremely narrow margin, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> but also because of you, he moved away. Well, don't say it like that. <laughs> Um, I mean, but, but that, that wasn't because of your, uh, play, your play style. That was just because you wanted to know more about the game, which is not, not something that I'm <laughs> intending to throw shade at. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, there have been times where, uh, my, like, cause when you think about it, bonus points versus house number, bonus points has a way bigger potential to, uh -huh. you know, it, it, it extremely quickly makes up for, um, house number. So like, so I mean, this is this is game talk. If you haven't played, it's probably gibberish. But <laughs> point being, like, there are strats that I know <laughs> that I have had time to develop because I've played the game a lot that probably make it easier to win, because like, you know, the folks that I play with, generally speaking, like all most of all my friends are capital G gamers. We're all dorks. Like, <laughs> wow, <laughs> everybody's everybody's gonna have like their own strategy, and so like. Knowing the game doesn't give me, only gives me an advantage insofar as I've had the time to develop that strategy and they haven't yet. Um, but again, I, I lost to Kiki and that was the first time she had played. Um, <laughs> Alex lost to me the first time I had played in a in something that I, I now believe. in something that I now realize was an incredibly unlikely <laughs> hand of cards <laughs> that I was dealt. Um, yeah, it's it's not uh, it's not like like I've heard about Magic the Gathering that like. You show up at a meet, you're not going to win. There's there's just no way for a beginner to break into that without, like, you know, like, you spend a lot of time trying to learn and get good before you can actually, like, start winning. That's not this game. It's not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I feel like, you know, certainly, um, when I've tested it and taught people, by probably the, fir the second, maybe third round, know what's going on mm -hmm. I, I mean obviously people will learn at different rates like when we um when we did our our like an open play test um and a family came to play with us mm -hmm. um we had a 10 year old and we had a 16 year old we're just learning at different rates like just period the end mm -hmm. um and so taking the time kind of invest the time to help folks be a be a good gamer I think there's there's that, mm -hmm. um, and I and I hope that you know with we ha we're we're gonna have the bust instructions, 
um, but also too like easy to comprehend mechanics. Um, I mean, I think that you know our our friend was only ten who who played it with us for the first time, blind play test, mm -hmm. had no reason to want us to succeed, mm -hmm. and he was jumping into that game yeah. just so so passionately. It was really great to see. <laughs> and you know when I asked him like, hey, sorry, what was it? What um, was it? He so one of the mechanics was uh, the you, the active player has a rope toy and when it's the next person's turn you pass the toy to them and woof at them, um, and we explained this and that little boy <laughs> I don't remember if it was right after we explained it or if it was when his turn to pass it he looked at me and he was like do we have to say woof and I was prepared <laughs> to explain to him like well I mean or I'm not gonna make you but it's just fun to do you know and he was like do we have to say woof or can we actually bark. <laughs> like, can we actually make the dog noise? And I was like, go for it, dude. I am not going to stop you actually barking at, at people at this table. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. It was great. It yeah. was great. Very um, funny. Another way to, it, just another way to animate the player, you mm -hmm. know. Um, get, him, get him doing something and uh, get him involved in the game. You know? mm -hmm. uh, and of course, for me, uh, one of the, one of the most delightful aspects of that transaction is that when you when you're playing a game sometimes you have somebody who's just distracted or on their phone or whatever right and you go oh uh, i've passed the play it's your turn that's it's your turn no no my turn is done it's your mm -hmm. turn mm. somebody barks at you you know <laughs> that it's your turn yeah. it's time to pay attention to the game so um, yeah that's super, super fun mm -hmm. for me I'm sorry, Alex. I interrupted uh, as you were explaining. No, no, it's, it's exactly where that's exactly what what we want on on this good chat, good time to hang out. <laughs> um, uh, to answer my to answer that my my own question uh, is knowing the game really really well enable you to guarantee victory? Mm -hmm. uh, no, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Definitely not. Yeah. Um, I, I made it, and I was like, "Okay, Sarah, like, let's let me let me show you this game. Like, you know, I want you to kind of understand the concepts behind it, believe in the believe in the gameplay to help you, like, and then of course, like, you know, way that the cards are going to interact and the way that they're going to interact for players on a table, like that might influence the art, right? I think, mm -hmm. and it has, mm -hmm. um, in terms of like sizing, angles, that sort of thing." Um, but yeah, I, I thought like, okay, I'm gonna focus on this and make sure that she understands the game. Mm. Uh, but I'm gonna still try to play. I'm gonna play to win. Mm -hmm. And it was just not happening for me. <laughs> you know, I would, I would, it would be like for me, I like, I got skunks. Okay, I lose your lose your grooming card. If you don't have one, you lose two cards from your fall. I'm like, well, it's two cards. And I think I got, you know else happened and I lost another card so I had like zero cards in my paw at the beginning of the game <laughs> to try to make a comeback and uh, you know all, all the while Sarah just like oh well should I play the one should I play the one obedience or the three obedience <laughs> like, yeah. well go ahead and play the three because you know there's more okay I've got two of them what should I do now? Oh my goodness. Like <laughs> Yeah, I had a lot of grooming cards and Ashley or uh, Agnes, the adopter that I ended up getting matched with, um, it gives bonus points for grooming cards. I think I had at least two of the three grooming cards. Um and uh yeah, I, it's hilarious to me now thinking back that like you were having such a an unusually difficult game for someone who did not appreciate <laughs> even a little bit how wild it was. <laughs> I remember like playing cards and you going like, "Hmm, well that, hmm, that's uh, that's really unlikely." <laughs> and I was just like, "Oh, come on, <laughs> sour grapes." But no, <laughs> it was actually very unusual. It's like when you when you play Uno and that one person has like four Pride. of the wild draw four mm -hmm. cards and you're yeah. like, how did, how did you, you do even that? Do that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just hoarding those? Like, what's yeah. going on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You know. Um, yeah. So I guess you know. In in the th the thought process here, maybe we should talk a little bit about you know how how does that gameplay and knowing that gameplay change the way that you know both the art and the design have kind of come forwards you know when we 
uh, when we all met, and also too when you know you guys have, having played the game. There's a there's a significant difference, I think, between having art that can be, uh, you know, an art print that's eight by ten that's framed, you know, on a wall, versus art that needs and design that needs to come through, they both game mechanics, story elements, and you know, also to be easy enough to read, you know, halfway across the table. Mm -hmm. So you know, just kind of, I am curious and share after you played the game how did that get influenced um kiki do you want to go first um well i i don't know because i feel like my whole my my whole introduction to the game was hey i'm gonna do the design you know <laughs> yeah that's um, true <laughs> we we played the game with okay what would you do for this design in mind right um, so yeah, that, I'm, I'm sure that that changes it quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, I think the only like gear shift I had was from talking about it on the phone mm -hmm. um, versus looking at the actual cards. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah. So when Kiki's introduction to this project, and we've gone over it on stream before, but I'm, I'm mm -hmm. we'll go over it again. Um, <laughs> was uh, we've been friends for a long, long, long time. And uh, I signed on to this project um, first, and when we just so happened to be on the phone, just like talking and catching up, and I was talking about this design problem at work because Kiki's a designer and she can answer those problems. Um, and just like not even me being like, "Hey, can you please solve this?" She was just asking me more questions about it to understand and giving these great suggestions. And at that point, I was like, "Hmm, can can you continue to do this, please?" I was like, hey, Alex, there's, uh, I know somebody who's fixing all these problems. Can we please, can we do something about this? Um, yeah, so, you know, after, I don't remember, you didn't do the test before playing it. Um, no, I didn't. When did we, we played New Year's, right? Oh, we, yeah, that's right. Was it January 1 or whatever? Point being, we played around New Year's, and um, that was before she had we, had, we had talked about it a lot because I talk a lot um, and I was really <laughs> trying to at that point I was um, you mean I was both were like kind of struggling with you know we, we kind of knew what the what we wanted the art to feel like we were kind of settled on this this kind of painty realistic but still cartoony and expressive fun bright painting style but we didn't know what the design was going to be like and I really wanted you know I'm a very big picture person and so it was important to me to know like but what is the final product going to look like you know the art is one thing but like the board design the card design the font like that carries so much of the feeling of the thing so what is it and I you know wouldn't shut up about it <laughs> Kiki was like here you go he was like we were just on the phone talking about it and you sent me like five different examples of cards that you were like hmm, what about this what about this and I'm like wow these are great like in the Alex and I went to a board game store. We went to a few board game stores and started pulling games off of shelves, looking at them and like trying to figure out if they matched. And I don't know that we really found one that did, but you, Kiki, without any of that, just on the phone, just knowing good design and art, <laughs> like from my description, pulled all of these great, you know, great examples. Um, and so only after that, when we were thinking of a design perspective, did we get to play. Yep. Yeah, so you're saying, like, the gear shift happened on, like, in our conversations talking about it? Um, Before or after the, like, trying to do some designs? It was, I mean, I remember talking about it on the phone, and I had kind of a different idea of what it was. So I think once I played the game and had the cards in my hand is when I kind of, you know changed mm -hmm. gears it's like this is a different thing than what i thought it was mm -hmm. um yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, there's really no i mean yeah especially when uh you're coming up with some of these designs um both game elements as well as kind of what can be showcased and, and what needs to be on the card um having the thing is is quite important mm -hmm. um you know i, I think that the one of the things that make this a very, very super team is the fact that we can all 
talk about it from like game design perspective, a player, like what what do we owe to the customer, to the player of this game? And then um, you know, kind of focusing on those outcomes, then filling into like, okay, well, what, what needs to be there absolutely critically? Um, and I think that this, this part of it, um, I've been very, very lucky. And again, this is a super team to kind of go through that without a, without a crowned, uh, art director, hmm. right? Like there's like, none of us have necessarily taken on this mantle. Hmm. You've all really contributed to be, to make this design very, very whole. Um, I don't know how else to say that. <laughs> I never really thought about that, really, because you know, I would I would guess um, that a lot of projects like this have an art director who asks, maybe is asking all of these same questions, but at a, a thirty thousand foot view kind of mm -hmm. level. Like we've been able to just say, you know, canvas is quite small; it's the size of a poker card. Right? The design needs to come through to make sure we're not, you know, then make sure that the illustrations carry the story. Uh, okay, great. <laughs> it all in. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's just been an incredible, incredible feat um, to, to get to this end, this level of quality. Uh, and I'm very pleased. And, um, you know, hopefully uh, the folks on the stream, whether you're listening to this now or in the future, um, We'll, we'll we'll see that see that too. It's not just yeah. We 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 had an idea and we threw this random person, random <laughs> dog, and just kind of matched them. Uh, mm -hmm. Really did kind of come into play uh, based mainly on the gameplay and and that design, which I really do um, really do like. I have seen games where like oh they had an illustration. I guess they designed around that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. Um, which can change replayability of a game. Mm -hmm. um, Kiki, sorry, you guys are, are board gamers. You probably have some thoughts <laughs> around that. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Uh, well, I mean, I, I'm. I wish I played more board games. I like. I watch people play board games, and I obviously like. I have, as an artist, <laughs> as a gamer, <laughs> as an artist, as a gamer, <laughs> as as the person that I am have a lot of opinions about a lot of things um <laughs> and i always you know and and being an artist who like wants to who works in games and you know has worked in freelance art for a long time i always look at game art and game assets and try and think about their reasoning and doing that and how well it serves the purpose and how well it serves the player you know and uh yeah i don't uh <laughs> I don't have any, you know, hot takes that I'm like I'm not trying to put anybody in blast or anything like that, but um it's <laughs> it's definitely a consideration of like I want to make sure that it that's kind of, part of the reason that I was so stuck on trying to figure out the design was in the beginning because like I wanted to be able to put myself in the player's shoes and make sure that the art wasn't going to be doing anything to undermine the design that the colors could match the design as as well as we could possibly do it you know to try and make sure that there wasn't any incongruity between those two aspects i really wanted them to blend seamlessly because again being <laughs> being an artist and a gamer and a person i've definitely seen it happen where they seem to be kind of at odds with one another um or you can tell that certain aspects were uh, weighted a lot more heavily and it's like the tail wagging the mm. dog you know if you have a beautiful game that doesn't function or a game that functions really well but they didn't take any time to think about the design you know um mm. yeah like like this this card right here is a good example of um like i wanted uh the color and the expression and i don't know how well this expression is communicating this but um this is the <laughs> i still want to adopt card so as you're playing um there is a moving card where if you draw it there's a chance that one of your one of the adopters on the board will go away so if, it's agonizing <laughs> so if you're towards the end of the game <laughs> and you have like kiki decided <laughs> that this is my guide this is the one that i'm playing to be adopted by you draw that card and it is a random chance that they just go away they're not on the board anymore um that that could be your game that could, <laughs> could ruin the whole thing um 
but this card the I still want to adopt card has the chance to bring that person back so it's not guaranteed um but it's a the the story beat the story moment is a you know mm, well I was thinking of moving away but I really want this dog <laughs> so you know <laughs> uh, mm, it's, should I actually move away you know um <laughs> and for the player it's a very it's a very hopeful you know I'm thinking about being in that situation like he we in our game we actually did have someone move away but we played both of the moving save cards before we ever played the moving card so, which was garbage yeah. by the way <laughs> let me just say <laughs> so so when so when the adopter moved there was no chance he was coming back but if you but think about if in that game if if he had moved away and we had pulled this I still want to adopt card how oh like gosh. how hopeful and like oh, mm -hmm. that would have been. I probably would have knocked over the table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So um, it's a so in every other illustration we've done so far, the dogs and the people have been separated by something. Um, there's been a window, or there haven't been any humans in the picture, or there's been a fence or whatever. But this situation, um, I focus on the adopter because the adopter is the the active the thing that's changing in this uh, mm. event card but it's also like you can see uh we're in the shelter environment we're in a warmer uh like yellow or beige is what i think of like being the front room of the the place mm. um so it's like we're not in the shelter environment anymore we're not in the blue which is you know walls and mm. windows in the enclosure we're in maybe the front area maybe closer to getting adopted we can see a window in the foster environment which is something that i haven't done yeah. yet there's trees it's a bright sunny day you know there's the, those bright blues and greens like it's a very hopeful color scheme and illustration and that's how the card would feel if your favorite person had moved away and you get to draw this in the stack um mm -hmm. yeah and i like if that's something that i would never have been able to do if i hadn't played the game mm. yeah the story behind the story right and then to really pull forward that emotion mm -hmm. um, and the empathy that kind of comes with it, right? Mm -hmm. um, because I think uh, it's anybody out there who's thinking about creating their own board game and you know doing you know doing what what we're doing. Um, the title of a card, the flavor text of a card, conveys only so much. Um, and and really, you know, you've got to you've got to trust your illustrator. You got to trust <laughs> your designer. That it's going to come through, right? And um, um, and sorry to interrupt. Hang on a second. I'll be right back. Okay, sure. Go for it. Um, yeah, we're we're got to to a point where you can kind of trust that kind of vision and that kind of interaction is really going to come through, right? Um, like uh, otherwise, right? You card could have been completely different. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think that there's, if I, if I were to, on a thread that we had early on in this live stream, uh, you said, you said, um, the rough around the edges, and I wanted to jump right <laughs> on the pun, right? and be like, ah, oh, ha, ha, rough uh -huh. around the edges. Um, I think that would be a great name for a card. Mm. What would that card do? Is it an event card? Is it a, you know, is it, uh, you know, is it the name of a special ability? Like, I don't know. And hmm. so, um, you know, rough around the edges. I, I love it. I wrote it down. <laughs> I don't know what that's going to be or how that comes into an expansion of, like, mm -hmm. what we're going to do. Maybe, oh, maybe, uh, um, maybe we can put it into the event cards that are going to come with expansion when we do bully breeds yeah like the pitbull and the and the doberman for kiki right mm -hmm. and the american bully american bulldog and the french bulldog and just you know dogs that have specific legislation against them mm -hmm. which i'm a hundred percent against and yeah. so you know if let's get this let's get this first thing out and then th this expansion that i'm thinking of i want to donate any and all proceeds like to fighting breed specific legislation 100 percent me up like quote me but i've been saying i've been saying a lot but now we have it on recording <laughs> um you know, i think that that would be a really great you know event card that we could that we could maybe uh some story into yeah um you know. 
That's fun. <laughs> I'm, uh, I, I acknowledge the pun, but I didn't think about it, you know, being so, uh, uh, inspirational, I suppose, being, kicking off that kind of thing. I agree. I don't know what Rough Around the Edges would do. I think maybe it would be a, um, hmm. Uh, see? see, it's like <laughs> the possibilities are so vast. Yeah. Even though we know what the game is and what the event cards can and can't do, mm -hmm. just like you know, having knowing that we've got some, at least a little bit of inspiration to go off of, right? And um, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, it'll it'll, it'll be fun. It'll hit us. We're gonna be like in bed and think like, oh, that's what the card is. <laughs> exactly. 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 Um, yeah. Hey, yeah. hey, guys. Hello. Um, sorry, I'm back. I actually have to go. I'm oh, really oh. sorry. No worries. Of course. Um, it's a semi emergency, so. Oh, yikes. Um, okay. You care? Okay, yeah. it's all right. Thanks yep. for joining us. Yep. Uh, thanks for having me. Thanks to everybody who came to the stream. Yeah. Um, we'll see you next time. Yeah. <laughs> Later. <laughs> Bye. Later. So, um,. Uh, with that, I mean, with that, like, possibilities are just so broad, and I think that, you know, also too, in a project like this, there are many different illustrations and, and things like that. Like, we even knew right away, like, oh, well, if the game is played like this, there's going to be cards that are going to be wiggling around on the on the table. That changes kind of how we have to um, drive the art and how it has to communicate. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that we, um, what, what I think we need to, what, again, I will always acknowledge and bow down to, because it's just so great, mm -hmm. um, you know, to really do that. So, yeah. Cool. Got a question in the, uh, in the chat there. Have you considered mm -hmm. doing expansion packs benefit specific causes like that? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, jumping back to, or half a step back, really. Um, have I considered doing expansion packs to in the future to benefit specific causes? Absolutely. Uh, want to? Would love to raise money uh, specifically to read specific legislation, especially around you know, um, like as an example. Uh, and I don't know where you are in the world, um, but like in the U.S., there are several cities that ban pit bulls. At the end. Whole cities. Cities. That doesn't seem like it should be legal. Possibly counties, right? Um, and then if you're joining us from the UK, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, pit bulls are banned from the country. What? So, um, you know, one of the know folks that. that I would, yeah, one of the folks that I would really, really, really crossing fingers love to be connected to, and I'll throw this out into the universe to maybe make it happen. Is uh, is a very famous actor. His name is Sir Patrick Stewart. <laughs> and he, when he was living in Los Angeles, engaged, fostered, uh, yeah, engaged. <laughs> uh, he fostered a pit bull uh, named Ginger. And if you look it up, watch all the videos, some tissue by, because you're gonna cry, because very heartwarming story. Um, then Sir Patrick Stewart, because he was moving back to England, um wanted to adopt this dog and bring this dog over to you know his country home and you know all those other wonderful things it was not allowed to because of the legislation which had been passed against bully breeds and so um you know he is very much against it i'm very much against it um but you know uh there are lots of lots of people with much larger platforms than than we have but um hopefully you know this this project you know share this project it could save lives hmm. um you know there are lots of lots of stories like that um you know i actually know uh, or i think in the rescue community it's fairly well known right that um because of those breed specific legislations sometimes they have a hard time adopting out you know animals because there might be uh there might be pitbull or there might be doberman or there might be Fincher, you know in the in the mix mm -hmm. um so if they they can at all 
um, you know, be upfront about it and at the same time keeping the dog as well as you know the potential adopters like safe sometimes that has to be you know that has to be documented um, which could lead to the dog being removed from the uh, from that shelter from that rescue from that municipality potentially even being destroyed and um, you know we don't have any of those elements in the game uh, you know don't want to bring it to like super heavy land but uh, the plan is to um, work on those expansion packs uh, very quickly I mean if we get you know ideally we get our Kickstarter out there you know talking about these talking about the breeds that we have but also to the larger message supporting volunteer rescue and supporting education responsible dog ownership responsible uh, dog adopter education and resourcing um, yeah we could get those maybe those ex maybe those expansion packs don't have to be expansion packs maybe it's just part of the game and so uh, you know that's the good news is that we're supporting that mission no matter how big or how small this project gets um, let's fund on Kickstarter we'll be well on our way and um, you'll see us in local game shops and rescues mm -hmm. um, as fundraising options but yeah that's that's, uh, that's the hope that's the desire about um, Sir Patrick Stewart and uh, Pitbulls in the new Star Trek series Picard um, his mm -hmm. Picard's dog is a pit bull, and I don't remember where I read this, but I read that uh, Patrick Stewart actually insisted on the breed of dog being a pit bull for this reason. Um, I read the same report. Yeah. Oh, it's got to be true, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it seems very in character for him as well. Right. Um, yeah, it's a quick nod, but um, yeah, uh, you know, and other other celebrities out there you know um are and they have that platform so hopefully you know some fingers we're gonna have a lot a lot a lot of really great information going out on our social media channels uh this content is also too really great uh to share with folks um you know, and and we're gonna have two we're working on like kits that we can give out to the rescues we're working on kits that we can give out to the you know game shops to just let them know hey this is what we're trying to do or we're, we're a mission based dog first right dog people um creating a game for dog people and uh and and to infuse the story of rescue and rescue journeys with some joy with some playfulness and some whimsy and i think that's exactly what um what we're hitting on uh every card the whole project um you know, and and i think we're promoting a, a very positive conversation right? um thing that i've dealt with the as a designer right when i come up to folks and sometimes oh you're designing a game cool what's it about well you become a rescue you become a dog at a rescue and you're getting and you gain the attributes that you need to be adopted into one of the six forever homes sometimes people go like you know, ooh, that that sounds like a really dark theme. Mm -hmm. Like, well, I like, what's your experience? Yeah, Maybe we should have a conversation about it. And immediately, you know, folks have a conversation, and maybe they haven't heard very much. I mean, I've looked at different games I, in my in my research. I looked at all of these other board games, um, and oftentimes will be a dog in the game, but the dog is an equipment type of card, right? Where it's like, oh, I've got a with the fight zombie type of game or a survival type of game. Okay, I've got the fire axe so I can chop two zombies. I've also got a dog which can alert me to zombies or something like that, right? And the dog is just equipment. It's a side it's not even a side character, mm -hmm. right? It's equivalent as like, oh I've I've unlocked a dog the same that I would a med kit. Um, and then other games where uh, you know the dog, a dog is prominently featured, the dog's a bad guy. Like, where you know, oh, we're trying to sneak past something to get to something. It's like a, you know, a children's you know, family. It is a, it, those, it is classified as a family-friendly game um, because it's you know about children trying to sneak out of the house or something, um, sneak past and 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 like pull like a you know like a childhood heist. Mm. The dog is the main enemy and it's a vicious dog that'll bite you 
like what like this is these are your two options yeah. you know uh like relegated to not side character just like relegated to like you know oh yeah it's just a name is having a get um or it's the bad guy mm -hmm. so i think that you know that's a very important part of this project is flipping that perspective giving the players the role of a dog at a rescue it's like well you know i gotta deal with the with the cards that I'm dealt, deal with the paw that I'm dealt, <laughs> um, and to find that right adopter. And hey, maybe in the beginning, this adopter seems like the best because they've got a really big house. But in fact, my you know, my obedience, my temperament, my grooming, um, my instinct is telling me go with that other adopter, uh, and you can still come out on top, right? Not it's not about matching with. You know, another part of that story, that narrative, is adopters with the biggest house necessarily make the best match for the dog. Mm -hmm. Right, and uh, yeah, it comes through. Um, they come through with the art. I'm super duper excited. Um, <laughs> want to do want to do all the things. Yeah. Um, responsibility again. I failed. Uh, I I will give you the 17 minute warning. Sarah. Oh. Um, <laughs> Uh, I know I'm supposed to give you 30 flies. minutes. No worries. <laughs> now I get to remember how to paint denim. Uh, so when you when you came to uh, let's talk about the card really. Uh, so when you came to this um, character model as well as you know the the card that you're painting now, talk to me a little bit about the decisions that you made and kind of the choices that you made. Um, either first or, or last, like, well, for me, I know, you painted Rachel's character card first. Mm -hmm. Character illustration was done first. So how did that influence kind of what it is you're drawing now? What are the things that you're committed to? What are the things that you've been able to kind of you know, leave out? Obviously, right now, she doesn't have a camera. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, talk to me about that. Well, um, it's it's been fun to draw. So when I did the the character art first, like their their hero images, um, that was thinking about them in kind of like a generalized way. Like I'm still thinking about them and their acting. You know what their the choices that they would make in terms of outfit or like how they feel in general. But it's a very like posing for a portrait. You know kind of situation like you're gonna look different in a professional portrait than you are in real life so this is a really fun way to get her to act a little bit um because I've, I've run the gamut with the dogs and their you know their acting and their body language and I've talked before about how I feel like the dogs don't really have personalities that are like established by the game per se they have you know breed breed characteristics which you know everybody who knows dogs will know about and I've made sure that they're always doing very like dog like things from you know my life having dogs <laughs> and knowing the mm -hmm. kind of fun things they do but like there is not um a, a character story um but for these people like having you know trying to think about what she would you know how she would feel in this moment or like what what her life is like or what you know just just trying putting her in a situation where she has to act was um is a challenge and again i don't know how well this uh this expression is doing it but that sense of like uh, uncertainty but hope um was you know i had to do a lot of like and i don't know it, if you go back in the vod you'll see me every once in a while squinting down at the camera and like making a face it's because i have <laughs> I have a little mirror on my desk that I'm using to see like, okay, how does the face fold when you're making this expression? What does it look like on a face? Um, it's, it's, so it's, it's different from doing like the Sears portrait because there's not really, I, I've made this person <laughs> this with, and with a face and an expression and likes and dislikes that she doesn't exist in the world i can't just google what does april look like oh. when she's thinking about moving away but looking at a dog that is just so cute she might stay like that's how <laughs> how do you find reference for that you don't um right so i just have to like squint into a mirror on my desk and make that expression and hope that i don't make her look like me and i make her look like the <laughs> the characters i drew first um mm -hmm. yeah 
It's it's definitely know, a it's, challenge. It's, uh, it looks great. No, oh, thank you. Um, when you're uh, when you are, I guess, speaking about the lighting, mm -hmm. the shot you mentioned that like you kept it very hopeful on purpose. Like, how does that? I guess you start with the character first and then work lighting in later. Do you work lighting first and then illustrate based on where the it would hit the character? Mm -hmm. uh, Yes. Well, I think um, so. This this lighting scenario is actually cheated a little bit. Um, the the I have this green bounce coming in from the window from the trees, um, and I've made it a very sunny day outside. So really, her whole face should be cast in shadow because her back is towards the light source. Um, so lighting is cheated <laughs> quite a bit, but um, hmm. that's it. Doesn't I hope it doesn't look like it's cheated, and uh, you know it if it there's a, Thing that I've said for years and have even in like with professionals it's like if it looks right it is right <laughs> if nobody's gonna call me out on the fact that she should be in in shadow um, and there should be harsh fluorescent lighting over her face then you know then I'm getting away with it um, but I, I started with thinking of um, like like that wouldn't be in service to the story right like her face being in shadow we need to see her looking at the dog and we're looking we're seeing behind her and I want behind her to have an open window, you know, a hopefulness to it, some bright colors. So like, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna just say, well, the laws of physics say that light only travels in a straight line and that bright sunlight can't be curving around to hit her face like that. Who cares? <laughs> it's a story beat, you know? Um, exactly. So, so yeah, I kind of like, I, the first thing is the, the first thing that comes is the, uh, the emotional aspect. Um, then I try and stage it in a way that, like it's doing everything it needs to be doing in terms of like in service of that story and then I bend the lighting <laughs> kind of not not as a final consideration um, but as a I guess I don't let it detract it only ever needs to help you know um, mm -hmm. anatomy mm -hmm. and the laws of physics can detract a little bit from the story because um, like if I you know if I draw her face wrong or if I draw the dog's anatomy wrong you know, we the story has to bend a little bit to the laws of reality, but the lighting is there's a lot more leeway to make sure that it's not getting in the way. Sure. I don't know if that answers the question. <laughs> it does. It does. I guess you know, like I mean, especially too, since you're drawing um, primarily, the focus is on the facial expression, mm -hmm. right? Um, that kind of woeful wistful pity of the dog but also too i think what you've got here is is a really great example of like the adopter feeling like potential fomo mm -hmm. right of like like oh you like this dog this dog is making a face at this adopter we don't know what it is mm -hmm. about this dog or about this pose or anything like that but it's like and also, too, the adopter is, like, down on the dog's level, right? Mm -hmm. um, taking that moment, um, that story beat, like you said, right? Um, I know this moment uh, when we were, <laughs> when you and I were visiting the, you know, the, the SPCA um, you know, shelter there uh, in, in North Carolina, in Raleigh. You know, I feel like and, I didn't uh, stop oops. making this face. <laughs> I was gonna say I was like maybe it's because it was on my face all the time on yours uh -huh. like I don't know but uh... <laughs> yeah uh, yeah <laughs> this is this is an expression that I know well of like I I can't I can't I can't I want to so <laughs> bad but I can't adopt this dog right now um that's right like, that's right but I want it so bad um <laughs> yeah and that's another like you know part of tying it back into the game too it's because like this is a this is not a decided thing this isn't your adopter deciding to adopt adopt you this is not your uh this adopter deciding to move back this is a mm, maybe maybe it'll work out you know maybe it'll work out but i might decide to move you know like because there there is that uh, it's not just a happy like oh yay it's it's hopeful you want the person mm -hmm. to come back but it's not uh, a, a guaranteed thing um right yeah right. and again right thinking about it from uh from a dog's perspective right like you just do we know it's gonna happen? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, what what is the story? And I think also too, what what 
another strength of working closely together, right? Both from a design perspective, a, you know, illustration perspective, and then kind of what does the game need? Uh, we've also left room for story to be told at the table. Mm -hmm. okay? It's this event card gets flipped up and story will be told at the table. Why is this adopter feeling like I still want to adopt? Why are they coming back into the game? Why is it, or why did they leave in the first place, right? And, um, you know, I think that this is a really powerful moment. Also, too, um, it's a powerful moment in the game for all the, you know, kind of game design reasons that you know, we we worked on with Geeky just, you know, just before. But also, too, from a story perspective, it gives players and when this is in your home, talking to all of you out there, um, <laughs> you, can tell, you can tell us what that story is. Okay? Um, and, I, and I think that you being able to contribute to that is really, really important. Um, it, it helps draw in the players to the game as much as any of the other stuff that we want to do, mission-driven and you know, talking about rescues and positive, you know, kind of that, that positive spin that we have beyond the project, but like focusing exclusively on the game itself. Why do you want this? Does this game hold up on its own? I think so. Mm -hmm. I hope that you know, everybody who's looking at how much we're pouring our, our passion into this also sees it. Um, but yeah, also too, it, it gives you a full opportunity to mm -hmm. see it in your own way. Mm -hmm. um, I have, I'm, I'm pulling that because, I'm pulling that also too. Uh, thanks Beth for the, for the comment. Maybe there are windows and or something more reflective on one side, bouncing the light into the into the face of the character. Hey, yeah, who knows, right? Like we've we visited several uh, rescue situations, rescue shelters, um, and of course a lot of these volunteer-based uh, rescue organizations, right? You may end up at a at a foster's house mm -hmm. rather than you know a, a, a true shelter situation. I think that you know and. and Again, what boggled my mind when I was researching this project that animal adoption is done the same way internationally. <laughs> right? There's a shelter with a location, but also too, there's tons of people with, uh, you know, that are volunteer rescues, big hearts, virtual organization. Hmm. Right? Uh, Golden Gate Bassett Rescue and Golden Gate Labrador Retriever Rescue who have joined us on previous streams all virtual organizations they don't have a building you go to to try to you know adopt all these dogs they're they're living at people's houses living in people's homes or you know their hearts are their hearts and maybe their living room is big enough to support a, a foster dog and um you, know, you get a really good understanding of kind of what that what that dog's all about and what what that dog needs mm -hmm. um from an adopter so yeah, great story but uh also too i think it's a great story that got us all the way here. I think mm -hmm. also, too, just as important, it allows the players of the game to make their own story and, and draw their own conclusions from it, mm -hmm. from the art. Um, and maybe the title of the card, maybe the design, you know, maybe the, the frame is going to help that out. So, yeah, mm -hmm. lots, of, lots of opportunity. Yeah. Um, and uh, thanks, Mom, for explaining my uh, <laughs> explaining away my cheating. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean it, it is. It's not. Uh, it is fully possible that on the other side of this dog could be studio lighting that is lighting this person's face <laughs> so perfectly <laughs> that is yeah. uh, <laughs> making her, making her perfectly lit. Um, yeah, I mean I there's kind of a reason that I haven't been too explicit with the layout or the design of the interior of the uh, rescue is because it allows me to do stuff like that <laughs> where I don't have to, you know, without establishing breakable rules, I can kind of do whatever I want. So like you'll see in the, exactly. the upper right hand corner here, um, these reflections, mm -hmm. um, these squares uh, are indi the indication of fluorescent lighting in the oh. room on the other side of her um so there is like you know there there is a light source but that fluorescent lighting would not be as kind to her <laughs> as i have made it seem um but but yeah i mean like that's 
you it doesn't it doesn't look wrong because there's no you know you are not seeing the rest of the context and your brain just assumes that you know it's not that physics is broken it's just that i'm not seeing the studio lighting that's on the other side of her who knows maybe she is the one who's taking the the dog's photo for the rescue that's true um she's a photographer she is a photographer so (laughs) you're right who knows Oh, you know, we could, you know, now we're coming up with new yeah. stories. You're new right, and so. I did this on purpose, and uh, no one can <laughs> ever prove that that isn't the case. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, okay, with three minutes to go for our our, our oh, geez. committed time, um, I don't know. Do we want to? Do we have? Do we want to reveal as a card, as a frame, or, sure. or without without Kiki, or we can um, still go for it? Whatever you like. We can. Um, I've uh, got. Let me. So I'm, I've still got some painting on this denim to do, but let me do the finish thing here. Um, will this card be green because it has to do with the doctors, or will it be purple because it has to do with the doctors? Uh, it'll be purple because it has to do with... Um, Characters. The character. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. Got you. Okay. Well, um, well, then either way, I don't, I don't have a, um, a purple card frame, but I can put it in a regular one. Uh, we'll put it in a regular one. You know, this is still, uh, as you guys can, as everyone can see, it's still very, very much work in progress. But I hope that you can see um, not only how how far forwards we've come with it, also this behind the scenes uh, look into <laughs> to what it is that we've cre- that we're creating for you. Yeah, we are very nearly done. We just have to um, let's see. I'm making the dog blur a little bit. I've got to paint the rest of her denim and uh, do a little bit of painting on the rest of her on the buttons and stuff there but it's it's almost mm-hmm. done let's see where are oh, my when you click that when you click that on and off i thought for a second that uh that i saw the dog's paw was like in a paw at her oh. <laughs> I, was like, I was like oh my gosh like yeah, talk about. magic <laughs> we'll put it on the belly rubs one maybe she's about to give him belly rubs <laughs> oh, we have that purple? Hang on, I can do a really quick Sorry. swap and make it into a purple card. There we go. <laughs> and we're done. Ish. Again, I still have to paint the denim, but we're 20 minutes from done. And then Kiki has to do her uh, her magic with <laughs> with the card card making very cool very cool great card reveal yeah what do you think is this uh are we are we approved last time we had yeah. chat chat approve it or unapprove it yeah that's right yeah 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 what do, what do you out there think how we doing <laughs> how we doing is this <laughs> yeah chat is this card acceptable to put in the game I don't see Facebook. I just see uh, YouTube chat. Uh, I'm in both. Um, well, maybe maybe people are AFK. So, um... <laughs> my my mother says nice. <laughs> All I can hope for. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, how many how many minutes are we right on time? Right on time. Sure. Yeah. Right on time. Eleven. Look at that. Perfect. Look at that. Um, awesome. Well, thank you again, everyone, for joining us live um, from you know our homes. Uh, stay safe. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Do all the things with the doobly doos <laughs> and the buttons and the bells. And uh, again, we just we thank you for spending a little bit of your uh, Saturday evening with us. Um, yeah. share, share the project. It could share life. <laughs> Looking forward to it, and um, we will keep you updated. And I don't know, we're we're not quite committed to the next live stream being next week yet, but mm-hmm. we'll see. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, or and subscribe to this channel um, to kind of find out more. Yeah, uh, if you're on YouTube, you can subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so that you'll get a notification whenever we go live. And so we don't we don't have to know exactly when we're going to stream next. YouTube will tell you. <laughs> we have that technology. Right. Yes. Precisely. <laughs>
Awesome. Well, thank you so much as always, Sarah. And thanks, Kiki. I know you'll probably catch up on this later, but uh, yeah, great times. Thank you again. And um, care. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.